Happening this morning, a warning for women. Be extremely careful in Albuquerque's Bosque. You see, a woman says she was raped and robbed there over the weekend. Albuquerque police are now on the hunt for the guy that she says did this. Police tell us the woman, who is in her 40s, says she was on the Levy Trail just north of Central here a few hours before sunset on Sunday. Then the woman walked to the edge of the river out into the woods there to meet someone and says that's when a guy with a knife robbed and raped her. Police say they have not heard of any other attacks like this, but as you can imagine, has a lot of women on edge. It makes me want to carry something to protect myself, you know. I think that's a lot of people's first thought is either mace or, you know, if you have your concealed carrier's license. Now listen to this. Police say the woman who was attacked had mace on her along with a cell phone, but the guy took all that. The woman says this was a young Hispanic man in his late teens with a mustache who was riding a white bike and carrying a black backpack. Well, the jury will not be back in the courtroom, at least not right away this morning, in the trial of a former Albuquerque police officer accused of murdering his wife. Instead, there will be a hearing for an emergency motion from the defense. Yesterday, Levi Chavez's attorney filed that motion. Chavez is accused of killing his wife, Tara, supposedly because she was about to turn him in for insurance fraud for saying his truck got stolen when it really wasn't. The motion from Levi's attorney says the lawyer who represented Tara's family in the wrongful death lawsuit, this man, may be holding back evidence that would hurt the prosecution and help the defense. My problem is that the state is relying on information that has been filtered through the civil attorney. Well, the civil attorney here says that is not true. And on top of that, there's another new issue. Yesterday, both the defense and prosecution learned a state insurance fraud agent did not turn over notes and evidence from his investigation to Levi's truck getting supposedly stolen. That's a key point for prosecutors in the murder trial. The defense says that could get the charges dismissed. We'll be back in court this morning. We will let you know what happens. All right, this story a bit disturbing here. A man is in jail this morning. He's accused of hitting a three-year-old boy in the head with a hammer at a local supermarket. Police arrested 37-year-old Clayton Sen. They say the W amputee in a wheelchair fractured the toddler's skull with a hammer at this Northwest Albuquerque Smiths yesterday. Witnesses told police that he tried to hit two other young children, but the victim's father jumped on the attacker. Witnesses say that they had to restrain the child's father prior to police arrival because the father was obviously so upset about what happened to his child that he was trying to get at the offender. Police say the boy is at UNM Hospital where he is expected to recover. Now we've learned that the suspected attacker made headlines about two winters ago when Albuquerque rescuers saved the man from the river where he had been trapped in the mud for three days. It's video of that rescue there. Even then, police told us that this guy was wanted for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. The accused burrito bomber isn't getting out of federal custody anytime soon. You see, the feds say Brian DeMarco threatened to blow up the Albuquerque FBI office with a bomb placed in a burrito. They say he also threatened to do the same with the Social Security office using a time device. Now, this guy claims the government put some sort of a tracking device in his head and that he was being beamed photos into his head. Yesterday, a judge ordered that DeMarco, who is charged with making threats and creating a hoax, remain locked up until trial. Well, happening right now, we are all getting ready for an even bigger mess that will be Paseo del Norte and I-25 that is once construction starts here in just a few months. And this morning, businesses in the area will have a chance to air out any concerns that they may have. News 13's David Romero spoke with some of those business owners and joins us live from Paseo and I-25. Good morning, David. Good morning, Elizabeth. Well, the State Department of Transportation is trying to make the transition easier for these businesses in the area, and they're reaching out to them through public meetings and helping them to learn about the project. Now, that meeting is going to take place today where they will learn more about everything and maps that show improvements for the area and look at uh, the schedule for completing the project. They will, those will also be available at that meeting. Now, business owners will also be able to ask project officials any questions about the two-year-long project and the effect it will have have on their business. Now businesses like Evolve Fitness near Paseo 925, they hope the construction doesn't lead to customer loss, but to more people possibly driving through different routes and seeing them. You know what, I think it's going to affect us on a level of just uh, getting some new traffic in, especially since people aren't going to be taking Paseo as much, but um, we got a really good um, core group of people here that are really dedicated and spreading the word of mouth, so I think it's going to work out just fine. 
And again, today's meeting will take place at 10 o'clock this morning. That's at the CNM Workforce Training Center. That's on the their north campus here. It's just west of I-25 and just north of Alameda. Elizabeth, back to you. All right, thank you for that update, David. And if you want to learn more about the Paseo and I-25 project, just head to KRQE.com and click under KRQE links. Part of the state are still on fire watch this morning. Last night there was a small fire in the Albuquerque Bosque near Alameda and the river, but firefighters quickly knocked it down. No word on the cause yet, but the biggest concern remains the silver fire that is burning in the Gila. It is at 23,000 23, acres and it is still threatening the tiny town of Kingston. Now the weather isn't helping as much since it continues to be hot and dry. And as meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke said, it is also continuing to be pretty windy out there. Well, Bear Cub in northern New Mexico is safe now after the Thompson Ridge fire forced it from its home in the Valles Caldera. Take a look. We got this pic of a little Bear Cub from the Thompson Ridge fire on its Facebook page. It says firefighters seeing a bear on a dirt road on Saturday. They kept seeing a little guy there. It was still there yesterday. And the mom, I guess, never came back to get the little guy, so they called Game and Fish. Workers went out there again, made sure the mom was not around, took the cub to a wildlife rehab facility. It'll stay there until it's old enough to feed itself. Absolutely adorable oh, little bear. Yes. But sadly, he has no mom now Aww. and really no home. And a lot of animals, there's a ton of elk. There are a ton of elk out there in the Valles Caldera, and all of them just have running for cover right now because that Thompson Ridge fire is moving down the mountain. Yeah.